God for the amazing time we had at Oliver and Holt Bosch. We saw you, Lord God, move like never before, healing people, delivering them, Lord God, from demonic oppression. And we have seen you saving so many people every night in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord God, that the days ahead are days of good news. We already dedicate the month of April, Lord God, moving forward that we're going to go back to that park every week and win more souls for Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that all event belongs to Jesus. We give you the praise, Lord God, and we thank you, Lord God, even for our building project. It is underway. It is starting. It cannot be stopped. We thank you that you have already gone ahead of us and made all the crooked ways straight. We just want to thank you, Lord God, even for this service this morning. We thank you, Father, for your word that will always go forth with power. I thank you, Lord God, that all of us are going to be stirred up in our inner man. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So I'm, I'm starting a new, a new series today titled Time to Build. Hallelujah. Time to Build. So this message, I'm believing God that as we discuss this message, as we have this conversation, that God will build up your life. God will repair your life. That in everything that is lacking, everything that is missing, wherever there are gaps in your life, as you embark together with us on this journey that God has set before us, God is going to do mighty things in our lives. Hallelujah. There will be testimonies that are going to be so amazing, like serious testimonies. I'm talking about serious testimonies for those that are ready to walk by faith. For those who have a different spirit like Caleb and Joshua, I promise you, while we do what God has called us to do, you're going to experience signs, miracles, and wonders like never before. This year is the year of the prophetic. Hallelujah. It is the year of the performance of God. Blessed is she. Blessed is he who has believed. For there will be a fulfillment of those things that were told her of the Lord. Hallelujah. God is ready to move. I promise you, he's already moving. I said he's already moving. He's already moving. I'm telling you, very soon we're going to be out of this place. This was the, a, a training field for us. And man, did God train us. God has really bailed us up. We thank, we thank the Lord that already we have, we have two classes that have graduated from our blessed school of ministry we have about 70 that have registered for our blessed school of ministry this year people are being built up hallelujah these are the people that are making a difference at the park as we do the work of the lord hallelujah we are ready for the multitudes i said we are ready for the multitudes everything went in such perfect order hallelujah that tells you we are ready for the multitudes now God is taking us to a higher level where we now need to build those people up to be like us. Hallelujah. He will build them to be like us so that God can continue to also use them. Hallelujah. So my theme text that I'm going to be using for this series is the book of Psalm 127 verse 1 to 2 in the Passion Translation. Psalm 127 verse 1 to 2 in the Passion Translation. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will cycle it in vain. It really is senseless to work so hard from early morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. God can provide his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Hallelujah. I love that part, that God can perform in your life even while you sleep. Hallelujah. Me, I'm not going to lose sleep for anything. I never lose sleep for anything. When I put my head down, gone hallelujah i said when i put my head down gone and as i sleep god never sleeps hallelujah even my spirit never sleeps. my spirit is always waking only the body that sleeps hallelujah so don't sleep when your body is sleeping your spirit man must become alive hallelujah that is why i encourage people always meditate on scripture before you sleep go to bed with a scripture playing in your head when your body falls asleep your, your your spirit man will continue to be alive hallelujah Jesus says, while men slept, the enemy came in and sowed tears. You slept happy. You wake up in the morning sad. You wake up, you slept refreshed. Wake up in the morning tired. Why? You have opened the gate wide for, the, for, 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 for demon spirits to come in. Hallelujah. Sleep and let God work. Say, I sleep and I let God work. Hallelujah to Jesus. So I want you to believe God with me as we embark on this journey. We're not necessarily going to focus on the, on the project and no, no, on, on, on the building on this message. The reason why I'm giving you this message at this time, at this opportune time, 
God wants to prepare the capacity of our hearts for what he wants to do. You understand what I'm saying? This is not going to be a motivation for you to give now. This is going to be preparing your heart because what you need is just a heart that is ready that God can work with. Hallelujah. In so far as God is concerned, he is already done. He's just looking for people of faith, people with a different spirit and a different attitude. Hallelujah. We've already asked people to register on our database for those that are in construction. If you know you're in construction and you have faith, it's you we're looking for. Hallelujah. If you're in construction, all you have is construction. Please don't go anywhere near this faith project. Here we want people that have faith. Hallelujah. People who have faith. Register your database. Hallelujah. If you have faith, if you have a critical spirit, like those children of Israel who never made it to the promised land, go away so far with your skill. Hallelujah. Here we are looking for people of faith. People of faith. God can deliver with many or with a few. If the few has faith, God will do it through the few that has faith. Hallelujah. So this message is just to prepare your heart. To say if you are a mamara and a complainer, this is not your season. Hallelujah. This is a season for people of faith. Hallelujah. I'm going to be challenging you to believe God's grace like never before. Hallelujah. Because I can tell you now, if the people in, 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 you know, who tried to build the Tower of Babel, people did not know God, the Tower of Babel, God says these guys, they have, they have resolved. They have resolved. They have determined to do something. They have imagined what they want to do and they are in one accord. And nobody will, will restrain them for what they have decided to do. Hallelujah. Listen, when we went to Olive and Old Boys this past weekend, we were resolute, we were of one mind and one heart. That is why God was able to move the way he did. That's why there was no, that's nothing that restrained us. There was no mamaras. Me, I don't want mamaras. Please, guys, if you have mamaras around you, come and tell me personally. And say, hey, pastor, there is a mamara here. I will jump out of the pit and go and address the mamara. I don't want mamaras here. God has called us to do a great work. We are up there. We don't have time for down there. Hallelujah. That is why we just finished now talking about a message, the higher life. Hallelujah. So that we are up there. We build when we are up there. We don't want the Sanballat and the Tobias of this world who tried to disturb Nehemiah when he was building the temple. They said, come down. Nehemiah said, we're not coming down. We're building a great work here. Hallelujah. So we don't want people who are going to call us to come down. We're going up only. Hallelujah. Amen. It's going to be, it's going to be amazing. In our side, we've got, we've got a big house there and there is also a cottage. So I'm going to set up my office in the cottage. Every morning, I wear, whether I wear a suit, or I wear my, my, my reflectors to be a security, but I'm going to be there 24-7. Hallelujah. I'm going to watch every brick that is put there. Hallelujah. Because I, I, I don't want, I'm going to guard people of unbelief. If you know you don't, have, you, you don't have faith, don't come there. I'm going to chase you out. And remember, we're going to have a security door there. That's why a security gate. That's why the first thing we're doing is to build the wall. The wall is not for thieves. It's for unbelievers to say no entry. Yeah. That wall is for unbelievers. I'll be staying, sitting there with the security guard and say, this one, mm -mm. let's, it's, I see it too, look, I'm going to go roof, hallelujah. We want people of faith, hallelujah. So you must believe God's grace. This verse says, unless the grace of the Lord builds the house, the builders are wasting time. Let me tell you a secret. There are many people that have, that have built God a church. Many. But they build it, not God. Yes, yes, you can finish a building and you build it yourself, not God. Hallelujah. Why will God take, take delight in that building which he did not build? Why? Why? Listen, this one is going to be God building it. He miraculously gave us the site. Miraculously gave us the site. The same miracle that provided the site is the same miracle that is going to build the structure. Hallelujah. By faith. Hallelujah. By faith faith. God's grace doesn't, if, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. Hallelujah. We're going to sleep and see God move and do what he, what he has to do. Hallelujah. Let's look at the next as, as, uh, portion of scripture. Luke 14. So the first part, it was for me to show you that God will build a house by his grace. Hallelujah. And God is going to build your life 
by his grace. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, don't try to build anything without God's grace. You will not be able to sustain it. You will not be able to sustain it. It may come together as you are building it, but you will not be able to sustain it. Nothing can be sustained outside of the grace of God. Nothing. Jesus said, heaven and earth may, may pass away, but my word will never pass away. Hallelujah. If, if it's built by God, it will enjoy the test of time. Hallelujah. I mean, I'm ready, guys. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for what God is about to do. Hallelujah. So Luke 14, we're going to be talking about counting the cost. Because some of you think counting the cost is to do budgeting. Counting the cost in the kingdom of God is not about accounting. Counting the cost is about checking your heart. Do I have the capacity to do what God is calling us to do? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is why when you make a, a lot of people determine a course of action and they never state the cost because they never set to count the cost. Many people, they do that. They, they commit themselves to things, but they never go far because they never set to count the cost. When it comes to the things of God, you must count the cost. How many people have made a decision, I'm going to start tithing. They tithe one month, then the second month gone. They never counted the cost. Never counted the cost. No. I'm going to join midnight tongues of fire every midnight. Never counted the cost. Did you check the capacity of your heart or it was just a wish? It was just a wish. The things of God are not a wish. They are serious. Jesus says, sit down, count the cost. And I want you to see something in the scripture that we're going to read. Hallelujah. And then verse 25, Luke 14, we're going to read 10 verses. TPT. With the short time that we have, we're going to read 10 verses. As massive crowds followed Jesus, he turned to them and said, I want you to hear what the master said, because this also applies to salvation. The reason why many people get saved and, and backslide is because they do not understand. When you get saved, you do not understand the concept of counting the cost. So there is the first stage of your Christian walk that is entering like any, all of them, like the, like the, the ten virgins. When they heard that the, master, the, the bridegroom was coming, all of them, they went in. But they never counted the cost. So the first stage is like everyone enter. Just like when they say there is a marathon from Midrand to Santin. Everyone, they join in. They don't count the cost. And they say it's next month. The wise ones, they start preparing. They know there is a marathon from Midrand to Santin. They start preparing. The foolish ones, they are waiting for the marathon. They keep eating bunny chow. They eat acha. They eat chips. Yeah, they eat malam ho do. Yes, yes. And then it's time for the race. Everyone is prepared. They are dressed. They are so nice. On your marks, get set. Pa. Ah, we all go. Ah, wood mid. <laughs> ah, as you go, they are sitting down. What happened? Going back home unprepared. They never counted the cost. Others, they won't even walk for that whole week. Like literally, everything has to be brought to them. Never counted the cost. The things of God requires that you count the cost. Do a calculation. The five wise virgins, when they said the bridegroom was coming, they sat and counted the cost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last year in June, um, is it? Yeah, last year in June, we took pledges for our building project. So many people just lifted their hands and completed forms. And then they just made me, because I carried them everywhere, and they made me heavy for nothing. They never counted the cost. Never counted the cost. Out of all those pledges, few of them that had value. Why? People never counted the cost. Count the cost, my brothers. Count the cost. Count. I'm not saying do budgeting. I'm saying check the capacity of your heart. Am I doing this by faith or I'm just joking? Am I really committed to this or I'm just joking? When you decide to serve God, let me tell you, count the cost. Count the cost. Do I really want to follow Jesus? Many people think following Jesus is just saying yes to Jesus. It's deeper than that. And Jesus spoke about it all the time in the scriptures. All the time. All the time he spoke about this. And so many people don't get this message. Hallelujah. So let's read the scriptures. As massive crowds followed Jesus, he turned to them and said, When you follow me as my disciple, that's the second level. There is first level where everyone come in, right? But there is a second level where now the crowd gets sifted. And now there is a separation. You remember the story of many are called and few are chosen? When they are called, everyone comes. But they get to a stage where there is a selection process. 
that's the time of counting the cost. When you enter the second level of your Christian walk, where you determine that it's serious from now. I entered with everyone, but now, it, now it's serious. Hallelujah. As a Christian, you need to get to that point where you say, now it's serious. I used to be in the crowd, but now it's serious. And this is personal. It's, it's not about your pastor. It's not about your husband or your wife. It's about you because one day you're going to meet him face to face alone. What excuse are you going to give? What excuse are you going to give? And the second level when it talks about discipleship is the power of continuing. Remember, we all begin. The problem is in the continuing until you become. That's where it starts. You continue until you become. You remember um, uh, um, Isaac in Genesis 26, 13. The Bible says he began to prosper. He continued prospering until he became mightily prosperous. Tender prone, yes, they begin to prosper. Continue, Pela. Do, lo, lo. And I don't even like the guy who said do, lo, lo things. But don't tell him. For those who know him, hallelujah. You know, I don't like him. He hates Israel with a passion. And I love the Jewish people because the Jewish people is where my Lord was born. Hallelujah. If you don't know it, let's leave it there. Hallelujah. Verse 26. When you follow me, listen to Jesus. When you follow me as my disciple, do you understand what he's saying? When you follow me as my disciple, that's the second level. Many Christians never get to that second level. They, they end with many are called and they die there. And the many are called. There must be that second level where you now set yourself apart as a disciple. You know what a disciple is? A disciple is a student who follows his teacher. That's a disciple. That is why in John 8, 32, Jesus says, if you continue in my word, you are my disciple indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. If you continue, the power is in continuing. Many people start, very few continue. And I've seen it in business. I've seen it in life generally. Ah, it's worse in the church. Worse in the church. Everyone is in the, is in the, is in the entry level. It's in the on your marks, get set, go. That's where it ends. When it comes to the second level, where now pressure, where there is now opposing force, that's where people quit. Because they never counted the cost. That's where it matters. Now, if you must lift up your hands, everyone lift their hands. But now when it becomes real and the, the power to continue must manifest, that is where the problem is. And that's where Christians fail. You must understand that there are three stages. Jesus had to go through stages. He died on the cross. He was buried. The burying part is the wilderness. The children of Israel had to all leave Egypt and go into the wilderness. In the wilderness, that's the place of continuing until you enter the promised land. If you don't continue in the wilderness, you die there. Check the children of Israel. They never made it. They, they entered. They arrived at the promised land. But barely because they were in unbelief. They were dragging themselves over there. It was so hard for them. They never entered the promised land. Why? They could not continue in faith. In the things of God, faith is critical. If you are focusing on your circumstances, focusing on what you are going through, focusing in your own life, you are so high in your own life. You will never be able to continue because you have now opened the door for the enemy to come in. Remember, the devil will, will, will match you pound for pound in the level of your life, in the lower life, in the civilian life. Things that touches your comfort. That is where, if you are focused on that, the door is open for him to come in. And he will come in and mess you up. When you say, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to follow God. But yet you have not dealt with yourself. You have not died to self and become alive unto God. The devil will come in. You will see projects after projects. You will never be able to participate because you are focusing on your life. That's the problem. And the devil will always know. For as long as this one has his, has his or her eyes on themselves, they will never move forward. He wants to keep you saving yourself until Jesus Christ comes. And then you say, Lord, here's your talent. I, I could not use it. Because I was so, many, I was so distracted. So he says, when you follow me as my disciple, you must put aside your father, your mother, your wife, your sisters, your brothers. And then he says, it will even seem as though you hate your own life. This is the price you will pay to be considered one of my followers. What is he saying? He says, there should be no person in your life that matters more than God. No person. 
No person in your life that matters more than God. He says, if you prize your own family, your own people around you more than you prize me, he says, you are unfit for the kingdom of God. You are unfit to be my disciple. You can't serve me and also serve yourself and the people around you. It's the vertical beam first. When the vertical beam is in place, the horizontal beam fits in perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how we build in the kingdom of God. That's how we build. The first thing that a Christian must be taught is to die to self. That is what God demands. That if you are going to go anywhere, we all enter and then we get into the place of death. Are you willing to be buried? I ask you, my look at Oliver. And Oliver, and we give them the simple gospel. When we come back here, this is where it matters. When we come back here, we become trained so that we are good soldiers of Jesus Christ. As a Christian, you must move from a Christian to a soldier of Jesus Christ. It means when you are a soldier, you are always in combat. You are always ready for anything and equal to anything. Through him who infuses inner strength into you. Hallelujah. You run the whole week, Sunday you are back. Hallelujah. Why? There is no time. Jesus in the book of John 9 verse 4, he says, I must work the works of the one who sent me. Because night is coming when nobody can work. Hallelujah. This must be our mindset that there is no time to sleep. The time is very short. Jesus Christ is coming back. Hallelujah. We never, you know, for some of us in our prayer warriors, we're at the park from 6 until around, some of us maybe around half past 9, others continued until everything was cleared there. 12 midnight. From 12 to 6 a.m. Every day, every day, we don't say, ah, we are tired. Siku Crusade, Gunguli understand. The world of the spirit never sleeps. Never sleeps. We can't be going there to deal with demons and we go to sleep. We understand the next level of our calling. We live for the glory of God. We live unto God. We have died to self. That's how we build in the kingdom of God. You will build through death. You can't build through life. For as long as you are alive, you will never be part of the building. Hallelujah. You will never be part of what God is doing. You must have died to self to be part of what God wants to do. Even in your own life, if God is going to build anything in your own life, he will require your death first. He will require your death. If you are, if you are too alive, you love the things around you, you can't go far with God. I promise you, I'm giving you the truth. It may be a pinch in your heart, but it is the truth. And thank me later for giving you this truth so that you understand the things of God. You know, people, Christianity is always on the surface. They enter and they remain there. It, there is a next level. There is a next step where there is separation, where boys must be separated from men. Men must be separated from boys. Where the sheep must be separated from the lambs. Hallelujah. Where now the chosen come in. It is not God who says, I want Manzini. The ATM mama, no. I want Kuchi. Lucia, no. Nah, it doesn't go like that. It's you who separate yourself and say, Lord, I am ready to be your disciple. Through thick and thin, I'm ready to go all the way with you. Hallelujah. The Bible in the book of, of, of I think it's, it's, it's Mark, Mark 10. Is it Matthew or Mark 10, um, uh, 48? In the message translation, Jesus says, if you are not willing to go with me through thick and thin, says you are not worthy of me. He says, if your first concern it's about you. You will lose yourself and me. But if you take your eyes from you and look to me, you will find both yourself and me. But it starts with you making a decision to go with him through thick and thin. Hallelujah. Verse 27. Listen to this. Anyone who comes to me must be willing to share my cross and experience it as his own. I explained to you in the message, the higher life, the significance and the meaning of the cross. Remember, the cross, the first beam is living on for God. That's first. And I told you, the horizontal, the vertical beam can stand on its own without the horizontal beam. The horizontal beam depends on the vertical beam. And this must communicate a message from you that it's a privilege to be given an opportunity to serve God. It's a privilege. My every day, every night, literally every night after all events, the whole weekend, I've been saying this in my spirit. Lord, we are unprofitable servants. We merely did what was our duty to do. There is no room for boasting. There is no room for feeling good. In fact, last night I sent the notes for the Blessed School of Ministry because we are done with Oliver and Old Boys. Life continues. We are in the Blessed School of Ministry. Choose Monday. We are in the advanced training for the second level on Tuesday. The journey call 
continues. There is no time to be busy looking at photos and not move on. The moment you finish one victory, you step on to the another one. Hallelujah. Why? Why? We're unprofitable servants. We're merely doing what we've been called to do. It's the grace of God that work in our lives that enable us to do what we do. It's God himself working. That's why the Bible in the book of Philippians 2, 13 says, it is God who works in us, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. We just avail ourselves to him and say, Lord, we are vessels. We, are, we were created for this. Hallelujah. We are clay, you are potter. We just did what you created us for. There is nothing for, to feel good about. Are you understanding, Mazolan? So it says, anyone who comes to me must be willing, willing, underline willing. We're going to ride on that word. Willing, 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 willing. He has given you free will, the power of choice. You determine your choices. What are the things that matters to you? Can you understand eternity right now? Are you dressed ready for service as men who are waiting for their master to return? Are you ready for action at any moment when you are called into action? Don't be a Christian who, when you have done something so little, you want a pet on the back. Always tell yourself, I'm an unprofitable servant. I merely did what was my job to do. It was the grace. The Apostle Paul says, I labored more than all. But yet not I. It was the grace which was with me. Hallelujah. The grace of God in my life is not in vain. This is what you must say. The grace of God in my life is not in vain. If God has given you a skill, you make that skill available for the kingdom of God. If God has blessed you with finances, you make those finances available. If you don't have the skill, you don't have the finances, you have the time. You can pray. You can pray your way out. If you can pray your way out, God will reveal that skill and he will put money into your hand when there is a willingness. Whatever you have, make it available for God. Hallelujah. That's where the boys are separated from the men. Hallelujah. Verse 28, it says, so, okay, let's finish verse 27. Anyone who comes to me must be willing, must be willing to share my cross and experience it as his own. Daily, the cross you don't carry it every now and then. There are many, there are some Christians, they carry it on Sunday. They carry it on Sunday. They put it down immediately after church. We're going to see it again at the door of BGC when we come next week. It's a daily thing. You die daily. You die to self daily. You live for the glory of God and for the good of people and you allow nothing to distract you. Yes. Nothing. There may be times where of course there are exceptions here and there but ex the exceptions will never become a rule. Never become comfortable when you are unable to serve God for whatever reason. And I always say this, you must be at pain when other people are giving and you are unable to give. I'm not, did you hear what I said? I'm not saying you do not have, I'm not saying that and you are not giving. I'm saying you are unable. The heart wants to give, but the economy is a fair mind. There are people, their hearts really want to give, but there is no money to give. You must, you must be at pain when that happens because it's not of God. God always provides seed to the sower. If you do not have seed, it's not how God has ordained for it. God always, he cannot lie. His scriptures, his word is true. He provides seed for sowing and bread for eating. David says, I was young, but now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken no seed begging for bread. Even the devil, he knows how this principle works. Have you ever seen a, a, an alcoholic who gets stranded for alcohol? Show me one. One. An alcoholic who gets stranded for alcohol. Alcoholics. I had this other brother. I passed on drunk. He died drunk. Not, my, not biological, but from the family. This guy never worked. Always drunk. Where did he get the money? The devil provides for his people. Hallelujah. <laughs> he provides for his people. Yes, this may sound insensitive, but it's a fact. If we have that Mzara who's always drunk, never worked. Doesn't worry about the food. He can be hungry, but drunk. So David says, I was young, but now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. So be a concern if the seed is not in your hand. Unless if every time the seed comes into your hand, you chow it. And then it's a moment for that seed to be planted. It's sowing time now. There's no seed. Why? The seed went into the stomach. He gives seed first for sowing and bread for eating. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone who comes to me must be willing to share my cross and experience it as his own. Or he cannot, underline cannot, he's not saying he may not, 
cannot. If you see that word, cannot, even if you want to, impossible. Do you see that? This is heavy. It says if you are not dead to self, you cannot be considered to be my disciples. You cannot. If you are not carrying the cross, living for God and for people, he says you cannot. And so many Christians don't know this principle, how important it is to their Christian walk. All they want to hear is, you are blessed. You're going to have another car and another house very soon. And yes, come and go. No house, no car, no cross. Listen, Lazarus, Lazarus, the guy was eating the crumbs from the master's table, from the, from the rich man's table. He lived his life, his entire life broke. But at least he made it to heaven. At least he made it to heaven. Can you imagine broke all your life on earth? Suffering all your life on earth. And then one day you, get, you, 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 you die and you still don't make it to heaven. You go and suffer some more. My goodness. So you were born to suffer for eternity. When so much has been available, it takes the power of choice. The choice. The choice. I've put heaven and earth to witness this day before you. That I've put before you blessings and cursings, life and death. It says power of choice. Choose. Nobody will blame God and say, Lord, I was born to suffer. No. It's the choices that you make. Opportunities were presented to you. You never took them. You never recognized the opportunities. Listen, with this building project, it's an opportunity for all of us. You may not see it as an opportunity, but trust me, it's an opportunity. There are people who want to join uh, big churches. Big churches, you know them. I'm not going to mention them. And they never had an opportunity to build because by the time they got there, the building was already built. It's such a privilege to be part of a building project. Such a privilege. For as long as that building stands, you continue to be blessed in your life and in your generation. For as long as heaven still remains, even when you are gone, that building, for as long as souls are being worn in that building, your children will continue to thrive on earth. People will wonder, why are these children doing so well everything they touch? No, 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 no. Their mother, their father separated themselves and did something that is significant and notable in the kingdom of God and God continued to honor them. Hallelujah. It's an opportunity of a lifetime. It's an opportunity of a lifetime. God, when you are, when you are building, this is what I'm believing God for, that as we build, God is going to build you up. Hallelujah. Listen, it's, that's, that structure is so beautiful. Did you see it? It's so beautiful. You have not seen the details of it yet. So beautiful and so massive. Can you imagine you have participated in that? And every time you see souls getting worn, and God has positioned us in a fountain of souls, every time you see souls being worn, come on, my goodness, you say, I am part of this forever. Your children grow up, they are married there, you say, I've built this house, hallelujah. This is something that is such a privilege. So many people don't know this, hallelujah. Listen, there is no devil in hell that is going to stop us. Never. No demon in hell that can stop us. They can sing, they can shout, they can try to go consult and do whatever they want. It will never work. What are we going to do? We pray. We win souls. We build. We pray. We win souls. We build. Any church that is embarking on a building project, they pray. They win souls. They build. I promise you, there is no devil in hell that can touch them. Already the devil is feeling the heat right now. We have not even started. He's feeling the heat right now. Hallelujah. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Yo. So to, to verse 28 says, it says, So don't follow me without considering what it will cost you. This is Jesus. It says, So don't follow me. Quit. This Jesus says, Quit. If you count the cost and this is too hard for you, he says, Quit. This is not me. It's Jesus. It says, don't follow me without considering what it will cost you. For who would construct a house before first sitting down to estimate the cost to complete it? This is where a lot of people go to budgeting. Jesus is, Jesus is, is comparing the kingdom of God to the world. It says, in the world, when before people build a house, they sit down to calculate whether they have the means. In the kingdom of God, you sit down to calculate the capacity of your faith, whether you have given yourself completely or not. He says if you have not given, this is the cost. Have you given yourself completely or not? If you have not given yourself completely, he says don't start. Remain in the crowd of the called. 
don't go into the chosen. Because in the chosen is the world of the elite. Many are called, few are chosen. Hallelujah. Verse 29, I'm, I'm done. Please stand on your feet. It says, otherwise he may lay the foundation and not be able to finish. The neighbors will ridicule him saying, look at him. He started to build but couldn't complete it. Have you ever heard of a commander who goes out to war without first sitting down with strategic planning to determine the strength of his army to win the war against a stronger opponent? If he knows he doesn't stand a chance of winning the war, the wise commander will send out delegates to ask for the terms of peace. Verse 33. Likewise, unless you surrender, listen to this is the, this is the, the cost. He says, unless you surrender all to me, giving up all your possession, you cannot be one of my disciples. I'm going to read that again. Barcelona, they never read these scriptures. I'm going to read it again. It says, likewise, unless you surrender all to me, giving up all your possessions, you cannot. It's not saying you may not. It says you cannot. You can still sit in the pews. You can still call yourself a disciple. But in the spirit, this qualified because you're still holding on to your own life. When it comes to the things of God, you can't cling on to your own life. That is why God made sure, he delayed it for us to build strategically. He put us on a detour. When we're supposed to build strategically to prepare us for where we are right now. Hallelujah. I know we are ready. We are so, so ready. So ready. That is why this message is not to preach to you, to, to provoke you to do anything. It's to stir up the gift that is in you. Hallelujah. It's to awaken the sleeping giant and say, rise up my brother, rise up my sister. We have a high thing to do here. Hallelujah. Verse 26. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and for faith is love? I'm going to speak more about this in the second service. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? His, look at his life. His blessed life in the kingdom of God. My goodness. The blessed life is so nice. Hallelujah. We are called for the blessed life. Listen, the building project is just for a season. After that, it is the blessed life. Hallelujah. Everlasting harvest. Hallelujah. Looking back and say we have seen the grace of God. When testimonies are going forth, we are there. Hallelujah. The blessed life. says, oh, what? What will a man give as an exchange for his blessed life in the kingdom of God? And then verse 34, salt is good for seasoning. But if salt were to lose its flavor, how could it ever be restored? It will never be useful again. Not even fit for the soil or the manure pile. If you have ears opened by the Spirit, then hear the meaning of what I have said and apply it to yourselves. Hallelujah. So here's my message to you this morning. If God can use you to build anything, it's going to be very difficult for him to build your life. Because, you see, when you are building, you take your eyes from yourself. While you are building, God is using you. God himself begins to build you up. Hallelujah. He begins to repair you up. In every area where there are struggles, there are situations that you can't control. You don't know what to do with those situations. Don't focus on that situation. Focus on God. Hallelujah. Focus on God. That is why God gave us a strategy. We're not going to focus on the building. No, we are praying. We are winning souls. Our focus is on souls. God's focus is on the building. And I tell you, we're going to do it. We're going to win souls after souls. Every week, souls are going to be won. Let me tell you what we're going to do. From April, we are changing the five days of prayer. We're no longer praying because now we're praying six hours every day, right? every day so we are changing the we are changing the pattern it's another gear now we are going to go for three days at the park but this time monday and tuesday we don't set up too many things we just put our our gazebos put our speakers put a few chairs there the only cost we're gonna encase security we are fasting monday tuesday wednesday we win souls that's where the lights and everything is gonna come up but monday and tuesday we're gonna go there we're gonna be doing two things we are mapping the place. We are saying we have arrived here. Nobody can drive us out. We are claiming the community for Jesus. We're going to keep the devil very busy. Two, we're going to fast in two ways. Either we eat nothing until Wednesday, 
and we break afterwards or we eat after prayer. This is what we're going to do until we finish the building. And then we break after, 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 after the service on Wednesday. Souls won every day. Tell me if the devil can try to interfere with our building. Try, tell me. Tell me. Do you understand what our focus is? Prayer. Souls. We build. Hallelujah. Are you excited? Are you ready to build? I want us to pray right now for just a few minutes. Father, thank you so much for this service, Lord God, in your presence. Thank you for all the people that came. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, that this year, Father God, we are set apart for glory in the name of Jesus. Everything that we have been doing, Lord God, since this church started was to get us to this point. We have seen glimpses, Lord God, of what you have called us to be this past week during our crusades. We saw the multitude coming. We saw them healed and delivered in the name of Jesus. We saw so many souls getting saved for the glory of God. And Father, we are ready, Father God. We're counting the cost. We give ourselves to the full, to the work at hand in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to pray for someone. If you're here, you're not born again. You've not made Jesus the Lord of your life. Or you're watching this online or on television, wherever you're watching this from. I want to pray for you right now. Make this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. I thank you that I'm born again. My name is written in the book of life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's take communion quickly. I thought you guys are distributing. See you on the Lord.